Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture on media and privacy. This lecture is part of your paper on news and society. Introduction In a community, individuals interact to know what others are doing. Such knowledge is the raw material out of which public opinion is formed and by which standards of public and private customs and morals are evolved. Much of the knowledge referred to above is of purely public character but often extends to personal activities of individuals, where the border line between the private and the public is less distinct. Further, some matters seem to be highly personal but raise issues of public concern. Thus, the claim to privacy at times tends to conflict with the claim to public information. Balance between these two becomes more complex when private activity of a public figure is in question. In performing its information and investigation functions, the media's attempts often end up in encroaching of the privacy of individuals to the extent of character assassination. On the contrary, a general law against infringement of privacy may desist the media from performing its investigator role, which would be more detrimental to the Indian democracy. Therefore, a correct balance has to be struck between the citizens' claims to privacy and the public's right to information. The best way forward is to have clear-cut guidelines on media reporting of private matters which this lecture attempts to explain. After listening to this lecture, you are expected to be adequately knowledgeable about what constitutes privacy, the objectives of privacy law, legal status of right to privacy in India and other countries, what constitutes privacy violation and what would be the balance between an individual's right to privacy and the public's right to information in media reporting. Concept of privacy The term privacy as generally understood means seclusion, the state of being withdrawn from society, being away from others, alone and undisturbed. The matters which are supposed to be personal to an individual but not known to others constitute privacy. Every person is entitled to refuse his home and family from unwarranted intrusion and the threat of unwanted publicity. Personal and sexual relations, for example, are normally entirely private matters and, are fa and as, as are family quarrels illness, an individual's mode of life in his home, and personal letters, and so on. As a human right, right to privacy refers to the desire to control the flow of information about oneself and thereby reveal the self only selectively. It is the wish to remain unnoticed in the public realms. It is the denial to disclose certain kinds of information which one considers as his her private life. It is the right against unsanctioned invasion of the privacy of a person by a government, an organization, an individual or by the media. But the boundaries and content of what is considered private may differ according to culture, social norms and values. Therefore, the concept privacy leaves much scope for its interpretation. As the boundaries of the concept itself are yet to be settled, so also the status of law and statutes which protect it. In some countries, this right is protected under the provisions of privacy laws. In some others, it is protected by the provisions of common law, whereas in some others, it is constitutionally protected. New Media Technology and Privacy Violations Though privacy has remained as debatable issue for long, the revolution in digital media technologies has prominently put it on the agenda for public discourse. 
The ubiquitous availability of devices like wiretapping, eavesdropping and bugging enable others to probe into the deepest and farthest corners of a man's house, even without his or her knowledge. Spying pinhole cameras and new generation multitask smartphones are used to clandestinely make a video or audio recording of private conversations and actions of individuals and flashed through the high bandwidth communication networks. The growing vulnerability of privacy exposure has created the threat of a surveillance society. As these technologies are primarily individually owned and used Collective action to enforce safeguards also becomes very difficult. We are yet to forget the MMS clips of a high school girl and a boy showing intimate acts which were circulated across the country. The illegal use of hidden cameras in nightclubs, bathrooms, swimming pools and hotel rooms has become rampant in which the victims never have an inkling of the fact that their activities would be recorded and circulated around the country. This is not only a privacy concern, it also raises questions about high level of decency and morality that the Indian society is known for. The glaring example of gross violation of privacy is the sting operation on a Delhi school teacher in the name of exposing her involvement in immoral practices, which never took place. What is more disturbing is that some media personnel were involved in this conspiracy. Media freedom cannot justify the misuse of such miniature devices to expose the private life of individuals to the public domain in the name of investigative journalism. International Recognition of the Right to Privacy The right to privacy received international recognition in 1948 under Article 12 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights which states No one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his or her privacy, family, home or correspondence nor to the attacks upon his or her honour or reputation Everyone has the right to protection of law against such interference or attacks. Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights, adopted in 1953, states Everyone has the right to protect his or her private and family life, his home and his correspondence. There shall be no interference by a public authority with the exercise of this right except such as in accordance with the law and is necessary in a democratic society in the interest of national security, public safety or the economic well-being of the country. For the preservation of, for the prevention of disorder of crime, for the protection of health, of morals and for the protection of the rights and freedoms of others. In USA, the Constitution does not explicitly provide the right to privacy. The US Supreme Court, however, has interpreted that the Constitution implicitly grants a right to privacy against governmental intrusion. The Supreme Court has held that privacy is a fundamental personal right emanating from the totality of the constitutional schemes. Justice Brandeis defined privacy in saying the makers of our constitution conferred as against the government the right to be left alone, the right to be let alone, the most comprehensive of rights, most valued by civilized man. USA was the first country to enact specific legislation on various aspects of privacy covering its invasion by modern technological devices. In the United Kingdom, the Younger Committee in its report on privacy in 1972 rejected the need for a general right to privacy, citing the reason that its repercussions on free circulation of information were difficult to foresee in detail. 
the committee argued that the best way to ensure regard for privacy was to provide specific and effective sanctions against clearly defined activities which unreasonably intrude in one's privacy. In UK, there is no independent law on privacy, but the judiciary has protected the right in several occasions. The Press Compliance Commission PCC guidelines assure that everyone is entitled to respect for his or her private and family life, home and health and correspondence including digital communications. It also provides that editors will be expected to justify intrusions into any individual's private life without consent. As per the guidelines, the actions of privacy violations include photographing individuals in private places without their consent. However, revealing certain matters of privacy is exempted in public interest. In France, Article 9 of the Civil Code protects right to privacy. The article reads, Everyone has the right to respect for his private life without prejudice to compensation for injury suffered. The court may prescribe any measures such as sequestration, seizure and others appropriate to prevent or put an end to an invasion of personal privacy. In Sweden, Privacy is protected under its constitution. All the four fundamental laws of the country, the instrument of government, the act of succession, the freedom of the press act, and the fundamental law on freedom of expression protect privacy. The instrument of government act of 1974 provides for the protection of individual privacy and limits freedom of expression on the ground of privacy. The Swedish Press Council Code of Ethics lay down norms to be followed in respect of privacy. In Netherlands, the right to privacy is protected under Article 10 of the Constitution. Further, the article also provides for the enactment of rules for the dissemination of personal data and the right of persons to be informed when personal data is being recorded. The Code of Conduct for Dutch journalists also recognizes privacy as right and recommends for its protection. India does not have a general law to deal with all cases of violation of privacy. The Law Commission, in its 42nd report in 1971, advised against a comprehensive legislation to deal with all the aspects of invasion of privacy. It advised for a beginning with those invasions which would amount to eavesdropping and unauthorized publication of photographs. However, from a number of legal pronouncements delivered by the Supreme Court of India from time to time, it appears that right to privacy flows from the right to personal liberty, Article 21, and the right to freedom, Article 19. Adjudicating on personal liberty, in the Khadak Singh vs. State of UP case, the Supreme Court has stated that it is true our constitution does not expressly declare a right to privacy as a fundamental right, but the said right is an essential ingredient of personal liberty. If physical restraints on a person's movement affects his or her personal liberty, physical encroachment of his private life affects it in a larger degree. In the case of Govind versus State of MP, the Supreme Court has observed that Rights and freedoms of citizens are set forth in the constitution in order to guarantee that the individual, his personality and those things stamped with his personality shall be free from official interference except when a reasonable basis for intrusion exists. But the right to privacy in any extent 
will necessarily have to go through a process of case by case development. Therefore, even assuming that the right to personal liberty, right to move throughout the territory of India and the freedom of speech create an independent right of privacy as an emanation from them, we do not think that the right is absolute. Reading the right of privacy into the fundamental right of freedom of speech and expression granted under Article 19 in the PUCL versus Union of India case, Supreme Court has said that if any person is speaking on the telephone, he is exercising his or her right to freedom of speech and expression and any tapping of phone will be a violation of this freedom. If the state exercises any undue interference with an individual's right to communicate through such medium, then it would be a violation of the person's right to privacy. In R. Rajagopal vs. State of Tamil Nadu, Otto Shankar, the SC has said, a citizen has a right to safeguard the privacy of his own, his family, marriage, procreation, motherhood, childbearing and education among other matters. The publication of any of the aforesaid personal information without the consent of the person, whether accurate or inaccurate, whether laudatory or critical, would be in violation of the right to privacy of the person and liable for damages. The exception being when a person voluntarily invites controversy or such publication is based on public records, then there is no violation of privacy. The above mentioned observations reveal that the right to privacy exists as a second level right which is not expressly articulated by the Indian constitution but has been read into it. Like the fundamental rights, the right to privacy as an emanation from either the right to personal liberty or right to freedom or right to freedom of speech and expression of a person is subjected to restrictions. As such, the above observations do not categorically recognize a general right to privacy as a fundamental right, even as an emanation from other fundamental rights granted to citizens. The cases of violation of privacy, however, can be adjudicated on the basis of the merits of each case. The right to privacy as such does not also find an exclusive position in any law in India, though the laws relating to trespass, defamation, criminal breach of trust, copyright, etc. protect certain aspects of privacy of citizens. Our failure to have a comprehensive law on privacy possibly is for our dilemma on whether we need a general law on privacy or not. This dilemma was also reflected in the Communication Convergence Bill 2001, which was prepared to address many of the issues of the communication systems of the new century, as no categorical provision was made to protect privacy. The bill provided only lip service in the form of authorizing the Commission under Clause 20 to specify codes against unwarranted infringement of privacy. Initiatives for a privacy law in India Considered as a major step forward to check cyber crimes, the Information Technology Amendment Act of 2008 introduced a series of provisions on protection of privacy and personal data, including penalizing any intermediary who discloses subscriber information to which it is privy, violations of privacy through the use of mobile phone cameras surreptitiously to take photographs or video clippings, of private moments and private parts and circulating those snaps or clips around using either the tele network or the internet and intentional captures or broadcast of an image of a private area of individual without his or her consent. The Right to Information Act 2005 under Section 8 exempts disclosure of any personal information which is not connected to any public activity or of public interest 
or which would cause an unwarranted invasion of privacy of an individual. In 2008, Section 43A was inserted in the Information Technology Act which provided for actions against corporate entities found to be negligent on protecting personal data. In 2011, eight rules pertaining to use of personal data were enacted under Section 43A which aptly clarified personal information, sensitive personal information, the obligation for prior concern, the purpose of collection, transfer and so on. The Right to Privacy Bill 2011 provided safeguards for the use of personal data. The draft bill was modified by incorporating some of the recommendations of the AP Shah committee which submitted its report in October 2012. Detailed provisions were made in the Privacy Protection Bill of 2013 regarding the protection of personal and sensitive personal data of individuals. Privacy and the Media Reporting The major form of privacy violation by the press are as follows. Publication about private affairs of individuals. Use of individual's name or photograph in an advertisement without his or her consent. Publication of matter which are false and though not defamatory place the individual in a false light in the public eye. Publications about private affairs of individuals This is the most important allegation against the press. But publications of information about private affairs is considered as privacy violation only if the publication is offensive or embarrassing to a man of ordinary sensibilities. Typically such cases are those involving publicity, concerning a private debt, publication of distressing matters out of the past and disclosure of intimate details about the body, sexual practices and the like. On the contrary, if the publication is truthful and newsworthy, it is protected. Newsworthiness has three different parts, public interest, public figure and public record. If the publication has public interest, it is protected, but the term public interest is vague and open to interpretation. Publication of information about a public figure, such as a politician or an actor who voluntarily places himself or herself in the public eye, is also protected, but the extent and purpose of privacy violations remains a major issue. If the matter is taken from a public record, it is also immune from privacy violations. Use of individual's name or photograph in an advertisement. If a person has publicity value in his name or photograph, he has the privilege to capitalize on it. Therefore, press cannot be allowed to deprive him of this privilege. However, if the publication is incidental, other legitimate publications However, if the publication is incidental to other legitimate publications, it is protected. Publication of matter which are false. Use of person's photograph in a misleading way or in an inaccurate or fictitious account of a person's life and character amounts to violation of privacy. In such cases, actual malice should be proved. Often, the press adopts objectionable means to obtain information, such as gaining entry to private premises and conducting interviews by deception, pestering and harassing people in private places for obtaining information, and so on. The press gives wide publicity to such information, with utter disregard of the means adopted for obtaining the information. The Young's Committee has suggested for a balance between the need for public to be informed and the need to protect individuals' privacy. 
The Press Council on UK's Principles on Privacy Setting for Editors Publications of private information without consent is permissible only if there is a legitimate public interest overriding the right of privacy. Enquiries into matters affecting the private lives of individuals can be undertaken only where the editor is clearly of the opinion that public interest in such matter may arise. The public interest cited for the inquiry must be legitimate and proper, not merely a prurient or morbid curiosity. A distinction has to be made between of interest to the public and in public interest. Invasion of privacy by deception, eavesdropping, technological methods will be justified only when it is in pursuit of information which ought to be published in the public interest and there is no other reasonable practicable method of obtaining or confirming it. Obtaining of news or pictures shall be carried out with sympathy and discretion. Reporters and photographers should do nothing to cause pain or humiliation to the bereaved or distressed people unless it is clear that the publication of the news and pictures will serve a legitimate public interest and there is no other reasonably practicable means of obtaining the material. Editors are responsible for the actions of those employed by their newspapers and have a duty to ensure that all concerned are aware of the importance of respecting all legitimate claims to personal privacy. The Matthew Commission Recommendations on Press and Privacy The criteria of privacy violation being a double-edged weapon, the Matthew Commission was of the view that it would not be advisable to undertake either an amendment of the constitution or the enactment of a general law on the subject. The Matthew Commission has instead suggested that Section 13.2 of the Press Council Act 1978 may be suitably amended by inserting therein the phrase including respect for privacy under the function of the Press Council. The Commission said, even a determined and substantial invasion of privacy may be justified if it can be shown that the object is to give news in public interest. The facets of the public interest dealt with in the exceptions to section 499 of the IPC should be utilized in deciding whether the publication is in public interest or not. Further, any of the following categories of matter may be considered in the public interest. Conduct including character in that conduct of a public servant in the discharge of his public functions. Conduct character in that conduct of any person touching any public question. Any performance character in such performance which its author has submitted for the judgment of the public. Matter arising out of any authority conferred by law or contract on one person to pass in good faith any censure on the conduct of another person in matters to which such lawful activity relates. Matters concerning any accusation made against any person who has lawful authority over that person with respect to the subject matter of the accusation. Privileged publications are also immune against privacy violation. These include fair and accurate report of judicial proceedings, 
fair and accurate report of proceedings in parliaments and state legislatures. Fair and accurate report of proceedings before a public body of private servants not held in private. Consent to publication. Matter from public record open to public inspection. Innocent publication who did not know or had no reason to believe that it would cause distress, annoyance or embarrassment for the individual. Matter published under legal authority to which a claim of privilege applies. And finally, publication which is for the protection of the publisher himself. Further, the process of inquiry involved in the proceedings of investigative journalism should be carried on within the same rules as are applicable to ordinary citizens. Invasion of privacy by the media The much talked about Radia Tapes controversy concerns recording of conversation between the lobbyist Neera Radia and politicians, industrialists, bureaucrats and journalists by the Income Tax Department with respect to the allotment of the 2G spectrum. Portions of the conversation appeared in sections of the media which received sharp criticism. Some media persons allegedly involved in the conversation refuted the charges. But industrialist Mr. Ratan Tata filed a complaint of privacy violation. On 30th August 2007, Live India, a news channel conducted a sting operation on a Delhi government school teacher forcing a girl student into prostitution. The teacher was subjected to humiliation for the alleged act which was stage managed by the journalists involved in the sting operation. The High Court of Delhi charged the journalists with impersonation, criminal conspiracy and creating false evidence. The media coverage of the Bombay terror attacks displayed the same lack of restraint where the minutest details of a person's last communication with his or her family were repeatedly disclosed. None of the information presented by the media revealed anything new about the terror attack. None of the information presented by the media revealed anything new about the terror attack. In fact, it overemphasized the gravity of the attack. The onus is on the Indian media to take initiatives for respecting individual privacy, which boosts its own credibility. The media must respect the public concern for media autonomy, which is based on the argument in an environment with stern legal provisions against invasion of privacy, the potential cost of possible action of invasion of privacy might inhibit the media from proceeding with an investigative story. For the victim, apart from the expenses, the court would become a place for the debate on privacy and the very purpose of right to privacy would be defeated. As suggested by the Matthew Commission, even a determined and substantial invasion of privacy may be justified if it can be shown that the object is to give news in the public interest, as different from news of public interest. The media view investigative or exposing journalism as an important public service and claim immunity against law on right to privacy. But it cannot be allowed to invade the privacy of citizens purely for news that may pander to prurient or morbid curiosity. A correct balance must be struck between the citizens' claims to privacy and the public's right to know. The media should rarely use the option of spying only against persons with prior evidence of involvement in immoral practices should spying be used. Let us now revise what we have learned in this lecture. Conclusion as a follow-up to the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights in 1948, 
a right to privacy got recognition. Though it is not explicitly mentioned in the Indian constitution, a right to privacy has got recognition in India through interpretation of the constitution. An independent law to deal with privacy is not available and hence privacy violations are dealt with under the common law. The country's reluctance to enact a comprehensive law on privacy was due to the fear that such a law would make the media vulnerable to interference by the government. Though privacy violations are not new, the advent of digital media technologies and ubiquitous multitasking devices have made privacy violations more evident. Of late, attempts are being made to have a privacy law in place. We hope that you found this lecture useful. Kindly attempt all the questions and please refer to the e-text of this lecture for more details. Thank you.